All right, in this video, I'll go over problems 24 to 32, not including 25, which is a topic that is BC only, and so I will teach you later in the year. So here we are asked to um, implicitly differentiate, I believe, I believe the instructions are. So to implicitly differentiate this, um, we will take 3x squared and take it to 6x, oops, 6x, and then the product rule will do on negative 2xy to get negative 2x dy dx minus 2y plus 10y dy dx, and then 1, of course, differentiates to 0. So then I'll pull out everything with a dy dx in it and combine those into one paren, and then I will add 2y and subtract 6x from both sides. Finally, I will divide to get my final dy dx. Actually, it won't be final because these are all divisible by 2 and therefore can be simplified to y minus 3x over negative x plus 5y. Looking at this, I don't match one of my answers, but if I factor a negative out of both the top and the bottom, or multiply through by negative 1 over negative 1, I'll end up with 3x minus y divided by x minus 5y, which shows me, nope, I didn't need to do that, because this answer matches here. I just had to write my denominator in the reverse order. The answer is b. Moving on to number 26, let's see, we want the derivative to equal zero. So let's go ahead and differentiate to get f prime equals 4x cubed minus 12x squared plus 8x. That is a power rule differentiation. Now we want to set the derivative equal to zero. So to do that, I think I can factor out a 4x. That would be my best bet. So I'd be left with an x squared minus 3x plus 2, and look at that, that appears to be factorable into x minus 2, x minus 1, and by the zero product property, if I set each of these three factors equal to zero, solve for 0, 2, and 1, those are the three values that will work, so my answer is E. Number 27, they want the second derivative at 4, so we'll start by taking the first derivative. We need to bring down the 1 half, and then drop a degree to the negative one-half. So to simplify this, we get 8x to the negative one-half. Now let's take the second derivative. Second derivative, I bring down the negative one-half, and then I drop a degree to the negative three-halves, which gets me negative four divided by x to the three-halves. Now I want to sub in my value of four into this second derivative. So 4 to the 3 halves, I think it's easiest to first square root 4 to get 2 and then cube 2. So I have negative 4 over 8, which is negative 1 half, and E will be my answer. Number 28, they also want the second derivative here. So we will start by differentiating. Don't forget the chain rule because the ln goes to 1 over the inside function, which is x cubed times the derivative of x cubed, which is 3x squared. So when I simplify, I end up with 3 over x. To get my second derivative, I take the derivative of 3 over x. And actually, if you guys are okay, I'll rewrite this as 3x to the negative 1 to make life easier when I differentiate with the power rule. So 3x to the negative 1 becomes negative 3x to the negative 2 on the second derivative. So the second derivative I can now evaluate at 3 to get negative 3 times 3 to the negative 2, which is negative 3 over 9 or negative 1 third, and my answer is A. For 29, they want the second derivative. So this is implicit differentiation. I differentiate 2x, excuse me, x squared goes to 2x, y squared goes to 2y, dy dx, and then 25 goes to 0. So I can solve this for dy dx by first subtracting 2x from both sides, then dividing by 2y. So this derivative, dy dx, is negative x over y. So to get my second derivative, I actually need to use the quotient rule. So I have low times d high minus 
high, D low, and then square the bottom. So now, if you notice, I have a negative times a negative, which will be a positive. So I have negative y plus x dy dx all over y squared. Now I can't leave dy dx in my answer, so I'm going to have to sub in negative x over y. So I'll have negative y plus x times negative x over y all over y squared. So that gets me negative y minus x squared over y all over y squared. To simplify this, I will multiply the first term here by y over y to get a common denominator in my numerator, and then I will have negative y squared minus x squared over y all over y squared, which is negative y squared minus x squared over y cubed. Finally, I can plug in the point 0, 5, and I'll have to do that up here. If I have the second derivative such that we're at the point 0, 5, I will get negative y squared, so negative 25, minus negative x squared, or minus x squared, which is 0, over y cubed, and y cubed is 125. This simplifies to negative 1 fifth, and d is my answer. For number 30, I need the second derivative leaving my constants in place. Start off, I get y squared. I need some chain rule going on here. I have some chain rule going on. So first I take sine going to cosine. Leave all your constants intact. So I have a cosine of ct times the derivative of ct, which is c, and then I have cosine goes to negative sine. So I have minus b sine ct times the derivative of ct, which is c. So cleaning this up just for ease of use, my y prime is ac cosine ct minus bc sine ct. So now for the second derivative, cosine goes to negative sine. So I have negative ac sine ct times the derivative of ct, which is c. Then sine goes to cosine, so I have negative bc cosine ct times the derivative of ct, which is c. Now I need to clean all this up again, and I have negative ac squared sine of ct minus bc squared cosine of ct. I'm at this point where I feel like I ought to be able to figure out if I match, and my most obvious choice I feel like it ought to be something like e, but that doesn't match. Um, I know I could factor out a negative c squared, so let me try doing that. If I take out negative c squared, I'll be left with a sine of ct plus b cosine of ct. And now I'm noticing that this here was my original problem. It is y. So my final answer is negative c squared y, and choice b works. All right, number 31, they are asking us to estimate f prime of 1. And this is actually, we have to use kind of going back to unit 1 with the concept of the derivative being the limit of the slope of the secant line as the x value converges on the a value. What they're giving us here is they're saying that the x value of 1.002 produces the y value 5.016. And then we can look at this function and notice that if we plug in 1, we get out 5. So we are going to do the average rate of change between these two points in order to estimate the slope, the derivative. So we're using the slope of the secant line to estimate the slope of the tangent line, and the answer is going to be 8 or d. 32, they want y double prime, so we'll start with y prime using the product rule. e to the x goes to itself times x minus 1 plus e to the x times the derivative of x minus 1, which is just 1. So I like to distribute it and clean it up. I'm going to get x e to the x minus e to the x plus e to the x, which is just x e to the x. So then I can do y double prime. 
the derivative of x is 1 times e to the x plus x times the derivative of e to the x. So that is my y double prime function. Now if I plug in 0, I get e to the 0 plus 0 times e to the 0. And e to the 0 is 1, so it's 1 plus 0, or 1, and my answer is d. That is all for this video.